Hi, I'm Scott and welcome back to the channel. As you can tell, today we're going to be talking about pipes. I have had a couple of requests to take a closer look at my pipe collection. Uh, many of you have seen in previous videos I do have a fondness for cigars, but I really enjoy pipes. Maybe it has something to do with the ritual of picking your pipe and packing it and lighting it and then enjoying it over a long period of time. And quite frankly, once you're done with the pipe, you rub it up, oil it up, put it back in the rack, and you actually still have something, a little work of art like this. Peterson Sherlock Holmes line, bulldog style pipe, um, versus a cigar where it might be $30 a stick and you enjoy it, but when you're done, it's done and it's gone. This is the bulk of the collection right here. I inherited it from my grandfather. Uh, when he passed away, I drove from New Jersey all the way to Ohio explicitly to pick up this set. Uh, I remember him when I was a kid. He had a study not unlike this one um, where he would sit. When I was very young, he'd smoke a pipe. He eventually quit, but it always smelled like pipe tobacco. And every time I smell a pipe, it reminds me of him. Got it. He had uh, quite a few nice, primarily English pipes. Very nice ones, such as these uh, Dunhills up here, which are from the early 1900s, all pretty much with a sandblast finish. Um, uh, a couple of R. Martins that I really like. As you can tell, I like the bulldog shape. So I have, I have a number of them in the bulldog shape that are my favorite um, pipes to smoke. Up here, this is an R. Martin Church Warden that has become a tradition to smoke this on Christmas Eve. It started with my son when he was very little, maybe, I don't know, eight or nine. Um, and I'd let him have a puff off of it because he thought that's a pipe that Santa Claus would uh, Would smoke I didn't have all this going on back then uh, He really would have gotten into it um, And now as a grown man. He'll he'll still have a smoke with me on one of those These are some Belgian pipes uh, These have a Mersham insert uh, These over here Again, a bulldog shape from a local pipe maker, Paul's Pipe Shop, here in uh, the Detroit area. This one actually has my initials stamped in it. The cabinet was my grandfather's as well. These are some uh, older, and all of these that aren't more recent that I've purchased are from his collection. Some GBD with an acrylic stem from the probably the 50s. I have purchased a couple Dunhills myself, Berthier Dunhills, 1962. You can tell that I've, I've have worked on the stems on most of these except for the Dunhills they're a little bit more oxidized, mostly because I'm just not that good yet at doing the stem restoration and I've, I'm worried about messing them up. And uh, so I, you know, I use some mineral oil on them, some very light sanding, but I haven't done a full restoration on those, on those pipes. You can see here, I also have several Meerschaums. They're always kind of fun. This guy I picked up in Izmir, Turkey years ago. This one, similar looking dude, was already in my grandfather's collection. Meerschaum is nice, it, it, smokes, it smokes nicely. I find it to be a, a cooler smoke than some of the briars actually. I even have over here, speaking of Meerschaum, a corn cob pipe from Missouri Meerschaum. 
it is actually a very nice smoking pipe for three or four bucks. The rest of that you see over here on top is, you know, I have some cigar cutters, some pipe tools, um, other, you know, lighters, things like that. This is all sitting on top of my humidor where I keep my cigars. You can tell by the natural light coming in here, there's a window right here at the side. And some of you will say, gee, Scott, you shouldn't keep your glass front humidor in front of that window. And you'd be absolutely correct. I have a problem with the sunlight hitting it, running the temperature too high in my humidor, and I've got to move this thing. I just haven't gotten around to it. I, really, I like this spot in the library, but it's not the right place for the, for the humidor, unfortunately. One of my favorite pipes I have here, just to show you how times have changed. This is a pipe that was given to my grandfather when he retired from his job as vice president of the Timken Company. It has a nice engraving in there. Kind of something kind of different and nice to still have. So. So here's another look at the collection itself, a little closer. Again, mostly briars, about 40 in total between this rack. You can see there all the accessories I have. I do have a secondary rack, you'll see here in a second. My cigar collection and this large cabinet humidor no idea the make. I've had it about 15 years. I do have a large Cigar Oasis humidification device in there. And over here, as I mentioned, is my tobacco cellar with all the various tobaccos in each one of these individual mason jars. That's a McBaron. See some Dunhill early morning pipe. Like that. And this keeps it all very nicely stored. See that one I've had in there since 2014. I made these stickers that go on top of the lids of these mason jars to make it easy to see what each one has. It's a nice Escudo right there. That's my secondary rack. Bunch of different pipes, all sitting on top of an old 1800s vintage safe. Yes, it does work. And yes, it is heavy. No one is walking away with that thing. So the bowl is almost empty. I've enjoyed showing this to you. I hope you've got a little value out of it. If you like this kind of content, comment down below. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Tell me what type of pipes you smoke, what type of tobacco you enjoy. And we'll see you again next time here in the arena.